Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gentlemen, welcome to the Atomic Talk. My name is Juan. This is my true partner, Anthony. This is a judo podcast for judo players by two judo players. So, Anthony, how you doing? I haven't seen you in about 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so sleepy because I've been walk, staying up watching all the fights live. And yeah, it's it, just it's just different. I know all of you are like, you can just watch a replay next morning. It's, it's different. <laughs> I have to watch it live, you know? And so what Anthony's talking about, if you're a judo player, you know this, or just a grappler in general, you know this. So we're in the week of the Olympics. And on day of recording, we're on day two of the Olympics. So we're recording this on well, Sunday. It's going, to, it's going to be day three now. Well, yeah, yeah. Remember, it's happening for us. We're in America, Los Angeles, California. This is happening in Tokyo. So technically, they're in the future. <laughs> <laughs> So Anthony's been crazy and just staying up all night and watching the events. Me, I'm lazy. I used to do that when I was younger, <laughs> but me, I just I just wake up the next morning and I just watch the medal matches because those are the ones that mean the most. But for us, we have a very interesting experience here in America. In America, the Olympics are carried on NBC, Peacock. And before the Olympics, there were all this thing about you know get on your Peacock app, get it, get the Peacock app. It's going to be on the Peacock app. All the Olympic sports will be on the Peacock app. And I thought it was there and I even looked it up and it was there. Anthony went on it and he looked it up and it was on there. Day of the Olympic start, guess what happens? It disappears. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, maybe, okay, they're just going to get rid of it for now. But the, uh, after the event, too. yeah, after the event, they'll have all the matches up or something. It'd be like one of those replay things, you know, it's like whatever. Mm -hmm. And no, the next day I went in there, looked at it and it barely had the highlights for the medals and didn't even have all the highlights. It had the, women's finals or women's semifinals and the women's finals and it only had the men's semis but it didn't have the men's gold medal match yet up and this is already at see i looked it up at like 12 when i came home after it was, it was after judo i think it was after something even later than that i came to go look it up yeah they, they start around 7 p.m every yeah. day uh for the eliminations and then it goes to around like 10 or 11 depending on injuries and all, all that kind of and golden score and stuff and yeah. then they start the final block at one and then the gold medal match is somewhere around 2 a.m. So, yeah. And that's for us here in the West Coast of America and in Los Angeles. So that's kind of the thing we kind of wanted to talk about today is like, why is it so hard to watch Olympic judo in America? I understand it's not a popular sport. Yeah, I know. But there's a lot of not popular sports that they show on TV. Like I, a friend of mine, their family, they're, they're huge into guns. They love shooting. And guess what they found on TV? They found shooting, you know? Yeah, I mean, shoot, shooting is something you don't really regularly watch on TV outside of Olympics, right? Same thing. Yeah. I think I think the same thing can be said about gymnastics, too. Gymnastics mm -hmm. is really popular with kids here in America, and I get it, but you don't normally see gymnastics on there, unlike boxing or um what's the other sport I'm thinking about, like swimming and all that other kind of stuff. It's just mm -hmm. odd that they're still on there but why was judo the only sport that was removed yeah like, so <laughs> it was it's weird so if you download the peacock app i know a lot of people did it, and even one of our friends um dave i think he yeah. messaged you about it he posted on that, Reddit, so, yeah yeah so what they're saying with the peacock app is that so you download the peacock app you're gonna get all the sports all the highlights all mm -hmm. the replays on the peacock app so me i already have the peacock app but I'm a cheap bastard, so I don't pay for it. Even though it's like only five bucks with commercials and 10 bucks without commercials, I used the free version. Mm -hmm. And they said that even the free version, you'd be able to re replay the highlights and stuff. And they did, but they were really late. Yeah. So when I looked it up, it was it was not there. And you told me that you were about to pay for it and then you saw it was all gone. And you're like, oh, screw that. I'm not Yeah, because we, we talked about it on, on Reddit discuss, discussing it. We were like, oh, this is like, a game changer because streaming wasn't as big as it is today mm -hmm. in the last Olympics. And in the past, you would have the problem of uh, having limited channels to cover all the sports on TV, right? Yeah. But with streaming, that's no longer the case. You should technically be able to just click the thing you want to watch and watch it. Yeah. So we were excited about the Peacock app and NBC, who released the Peacock app as a competitor to Netflix and Disney Plus. They've been like advertising this whole like last few months saying like you can watch everything on here just download it and i was excited i downloaded it even though usually i don't download stuff like this to ask you to sign in 
And like you said, judo was there. And then why I, it takes effort for you to remove <laughs> the thing the day of before the, the, yeah. the event. They literally um, took they literally took away that icon the day before. Yeah. It's like I swear it was there yesterday. Yeah. I know I saw it. <laughs> and they, I mean, it's fine if you want to move it. They, so they did move it to the NBC Sports app. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least let people know, like you know, like I I had to like search like a madman and also saw some other people online saying that oh it's on this app now. Yeah. Um, but here's what drove me nuts was I went on the app and then it asks you for a cable subscription login. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have something like uh, Cox or Time Warner or uh, in my case, Hulu or um, YouTube TV, then it's not, you're not going to be able to watch it. So uh, luckily I have a YouTube TV subscription that I share with my family. So I was able to log in with that. But before that, I was thinking of how we're going to do that screening and at the dojo. So I'm like, you know what, maybe I, I maybe need a Peacock app to watch the replay. So maybe I, mm-hmm. I should do that. And um, I didn't want to sign in. And on the site on NBC, it says, don't have any of these cable subscribers, question mark. Use our Peacock <laughs> app, right? Yeah. So obviously I clicked the link to Peacock app and <laughs> there's nothing there. So it's like, yeah. why are you why are you telling forwarding people to go to this thing? If they, I have a TV subscription, but imagine someone who doesn't have a subscription oh, goes to that right, site and right they see here, that man. yeah and they see that mm-hmm. like, oh I'll, I'll just pay for peacock and then pay for it and there's no judo there yeah and i understand <laughs> it's like oh it's only five bucks with com- like the way the peacock app works here in america it's like five bucks with limited commercials and 10 bucks uh, no commercial but you know you know we're coming out of a pandemic people are still having hard times like even five bucks or ten bucks can be a lot for some people i know to others like oh that's a meal that's one that's a sandwich here it's like to other people it means something and for yeah. someone like me i cut the cord years ago like as soon as i was able to cut the cord i cut the cord like i swear 15 years ago i finally i cut the cord so i've never had cable pretty much here in los angeles i had it for a little while but then i got rid of it because it's too expensive i wasn't able to watch a lot of tv so i was like you know what? i'm just wasting my money so what I had to do for the, the uh, was it Beijing games, mm-hmm. London and Rio, for Beijing, I had to use my mom's cable service. <laughs> I was like, it's like, hey mom, what cable service do you have? And I created an account. And I did also have to watch it on their weird, app, on their uh, website app thing back then. And then for uh, London and Rio, I used my sister's account because <laughs> they love cables. They'll, they'll still pay for the cable and stuff. Me, I cut the cord. So I've always had to use those kind of ways to get around. Mm-hmm. And this year, like we kept on bringing back, they said Peacock would have everything. And this is an American problem. I know this is an American problem. First world problem. Sorry. You know? Yeah. It's just... In other countries, it's more popular. Like I remember yeah. the IGF back in, it was the uh, Beijing games and London games. They did this big thing that the highest watched sport at the Olympics was judo. I'm not sure if it was the highest watched sport in uh, Rio, but like for mm-hmm. Beijing and London, it was like one of the highest watched sports. I think it was the highest watched sport in Europe those two years. Mm-hmm. So it's like, this isn't like not popular. It's just this American thing. It's for us. Sorry. So I'm looking straight. at the app now and I didn't notice it before because I wasn't looking for it, but it seems like karate and Taekwondo is not there either. I don't know if they, yeah. if it was there before and they removed it, but they mm-hmm. did, as of today, they did add a, a more, a more sports button. So I click, I just hit the more sports button uh-huh. and there's judo there, but there's none of the matches. It's just, it's just the highlights. It's the highlights it's just, and, and the news, the news article. Yeah. There's no yeah. replays. So it, it's just really misleading. Yeah. You know? so. Cause that's, that's what I did this morning. When I woke up, I was checking my phone and stuff and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to watch these matches. So I was like, okay, let me try the Peacock app one more time. And I used my Peacock app on my PlayStation. I fired up the PlayStation, turned everything on, got in there, logged in. All right, went to the Olympics no judo all right let me search and i searched judo and some wf uh, wrestling show came up and i was like <laughs> i'm not in the mood right now for wrestling i'm in the mood for judo sorry and you had to go okay so i had to go so i clicked that it went for search and the first thing came up was a wf match then i had to go search clips and then the highlights from yesterday's matches not this morning's matches came up and i was like so so i watched them again and it's just, just small clips they're like mm-hmm. they're about um the gold medal match was like four minutes long and the bronze medal matches were like three minutes long. And it's just what they consider to be the highlights and the throws that they consider to be the big things. So I can't watch the entire match. So what I had to do, which a lot of people I know in America and friends of mine have had to do is that 
you have to go to the uh, the sports the what's that NBC one? Sports NBC well, Sports it's NBC Olympics dot com is like yeah. what the site is yeah yeah so you go on there you click on what sport you're looking for judo and they don't have right there it'd be the highlight about okay so these are the these are the um the t- uh, what's it the knockout rounds and all that yeah. stuff and they have the the semifinals and finals and stuff they'll have that so you click on that and then a little thing comes up that says you have thirty free minutes yeah. So you get 30 free minutes to watch what you want to watch. So get, so get, get this. I got that same message when I was testing the projector at the dojo. Uh-huh. They count the minutes of you watching their ads too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I figured because I started watching it last night when I was doing laundry. I was like, you know, I'm going to try to do stuff. So like I heard about it. It's like, so I'm trying watching it. And like, there's ads. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's just taking time away. Then I look and I'm like, I just lost two minutes right now because I just got four ads. Yep. This is some BS. And if you turn off the stream, which I did to set up projector, it still uh-huh. counts. It keeps counting. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't watch like the active uh, count the active uh, playtime. So, if you load the app up, the site or the site up, it starts counting then. And then let's say you have some problems with the stream and you couldn't get back to it. And yeah. By the time I set up the projector and turn it on, I had like 20 seconds left. I'm like, what, what the hell? <laughs> Hajime, done. Oh, what happened? <laughs> but so, yeah, so I had to go there, I had to go there and I noticed that because I had to turn it off because I had to put my clothes in a dryer. So I turn it off and I come back and it's like, sorry, you've run out of time. I'm like, I ran out of time. I still had like 10 minutes on this thing. <laughs> Uh, but later that night, I came home. <laughs> I came home and went on my laptop because on my laptop, I have a VPN. Mm-hmm. So this is what I have. This is what I'm doing right now. I, I know other people might have some other things and f- have come up with your own stuff because this is by the time this comes out, judo's almost done. So <laughs> what I do is I, I log. So I went to the NBC app, their website, the sports one. I changed my VPN. So I get to watch all the judo matches 30 minutes at a time. <laughs> my VPN, my ad blocker. So I don't have nothing. I don't have commercials now. But I get to watch 30 minutes at a time. And every time my time runs out, <laughs> I open my VPN, close it, go to a new state, new city, new place, click on my VPN again, and then I get another 30 minutes to watch. Well, if you don't want to do that, I told you earlier already, but sign up for a seven-day free trial of Hulu or mm-hmm. or a free trial of YouTube TV, and then yeah. go to the NBC Olympic site and then just sign in with your credentials there, and you'll be able to watch it. I mean, seven days is not enough to, for you to watch the whole Olympics, but it's enough yeah. for you to watch the whole judo part. Well, Olympics, things like, to so. me, as a martial artist and to you as a martial artist, I want to watch judo. I want to watch wrestling. I want to watch Taekwondo and I, want to see, and I want to see how karate turns out, you know? Yeah. I, I, I want to talk about that. Cause I was watching Taekwondo and I was like, I don't understand this, but some of the stuff we should bring over to judo. <laughs> <laughs> like kicking refs in the head when they give you a bad call. Do you remember no, that? They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they have, um, they have like a um, appeal system, kind of like in wrestling. You know, you can mm-hmm. use a challenge, and then yeah, I, I, I given the, the kind of crap I saw this Olympic cycle so far, I think that's a good thing to have for because the coaches, man, like I feel like the coaches should have more say in some of the stuff because um, the players they they don't they can't see it in the heat of things, right? But the coaches see sh- shit that happens and bad calls and stuff. Well, we could start doing what that Mongolian wrestling coach did at Rio. Just get on the mat, take off off all our clothes, take off all our clothes and have a tantrum. Be like, I'm not leaving. I'm not my next, my underwear, my last thing, my underwear. (laughs) Who wants to see my winky will come out. (laughs) Hey, hey, that guy did get, get screwed over though. Yeah, no, that was, that was a bad call. That was a bad call. Bad call. Yeah. But so that's our experiences right now here in the United States, trying to watch the Olympics. Other countries have it easier because judo is more popular in other countries and America is not that popular, which is funny because with we just having an Olympic gold medalist at like a two-time Olympic gold medalist mm-hmm. with Kayla Harrison, having Travis Stevens in the finals, getting silver and stuff. And it was that with like four years ago when they were winning their matches and doing well, they didn't have them on TV. They didn't like stream everything. All they had on was, I remember getting a thing saying that, I think it was IGF, or I don't remember who put it out. I right? know oh, it was probably USA Judo actually put a thing out like, tonight, Kayla Harris winning the gold medal on blah, 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 at the highlight, their primetime channel, their primetime thing, where they go through like all the big metal matches. And they didn't show her upcoming match, like upcoming, she didn't show her matches she had and how she got to the, there in the semifinals. All they showed was a final match. And yeah. then the same thing with Travis Stevens, all they did was show the final match. And it was like, oh, did a good job out there, got silver for America, so proud of him. 
it's just like, why, like, even we have a gold medalist, they still deny us. And I don't know what it is. Like, how is judo? People don't understand how hard it is to get double gold, like, in a yeah. row. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, meanwhile, we have, uh, I mean, we, I mean, we have a, what's, what's the swimmer called? Michael Phelps. Mm. Like, it was a big deal when he did it, right? But yeah, when Kayla did it, it's just kind of like, I, don't, I know I know people that heard of Michael Phelps and uh, Simone um, from yeah. gymnastics, but people I've known people that never heard of Kayla Harrison. I'm like, how yeah. how is that a thing? You know, <laughs> like it, and I think with Michael Phelps also like yes yes he did win Matt he did win uh, Matt the matches I was saying he had a fight or something <laughs> he did win his races, but some of those were relay races and had partners and stuff. So it's like he didn't win all those matches himself. Okay, well, he like, did. He, he won like he won like the solo ones too. So yeah, no, I'd say he did win the solo yeah. ones, but he got a little bit of padding on there. My in my opinion, having those like yeah. team. No, ones, no, no. You know? he, he won like gold on two Olympics in a row. Yeah, times. yeah. So yeah. That's what that's I get, what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm giving it to him, okay? I'm <laughs> okay. giving it to him, all right? I'm just saying he was like, Oh, look at all these medals he got. I don't know. Some of it's some team events. I don't I don't believe them team events. <laughs> yeah, I I going back to what we were always talking about, it's just marketing, right? Like yeah. here you have something handed but, over to you in a gold platter and you like drop the ball it, on marketing it. It is so. so easy to just put it all on your app. Put it, you've been saying for a month or two now, it'd be all be on the Peacock yeah. app. Watch the highest on Peacock app. Just put it on there. You already have it on your sports app, your sports website. Just port it over. I don't get what the big deal about it is. And I hope. Here's, and here's I, the other thing, too. Like, we, we're, we notice how it's been constantly changing, right? The app. Yeah. Like, we just, today, we just saw another button. The Olympics got delayed for a year. You had another year <laughs> to work on this. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my thing is I, I kind of hope that all martial artists out there that we all gather up together, the Taekwondo guys, the karate guys, the wrestlers, the boxers, the judo players, the fencers, the uh, actually fencing was on there. It was very yeah. easy to find fencing, the archery guys. I hope we can all just band together and just complain to Peacock about like, put our sports on your app. We want to watch our sports. I, I like handball. I love handball. Okay. Love handball How the too. hell is handball on there? You can watch handball on broadcast TV. Hand, handball but I can't is watch another, judo. Yeah. Handball is another thing that, um, well, for, to clarify, like there's European hand, Olympic handball and there's like handball that you play out here in LA. And um, <laughs> we ain't talking about prison handball. Okay. I'm yeah. talking about European <laughs> Olympic handball. <laughs> yeah. Like that's something that's really popular in Europe too. And not very popular here yet. They still have it on the show show it on TV. <laughs> yeah. Every Olympics I watch handball. I was like, I enjoy handball. Like I said, I enjoy handball. I like, I find it really fun and interesting, but you want to know what? I love judo. You know, I love Taekwondo. I love karate. I love wrestling and boxing. And actually, boxing is actually pretty easy because I think just because we have big boxing culture here in America, it's the funniest thing. You always find boxing on some weird, crazy far NBC channel, like MSNBC. Like, hmm, how's my financial stocks going? Oh, he's got knocked out. <laughs> yeah, we we need we need a, a governing body, whether it's USA <laughs> Judo or not, that will actually spend money on advertising, like, mm. and not just on athletes, like developing athletes, because. It's ridiculous. Anyway, that's where money comes from, right? You don't have yeah. the viewerships is not going to get that money coming. Yeah. So that's our experience here in America <laughs> trying to watch <laughs> judo in the Olympics. I know this might apply not apply to everyone in every country. If it's even a smaller country, like countries like I bet Mexico or some of the other South American countries that have less judo players, I wonder if they can watch judo in those countries. But yeah. In Japan, it's on normal broadcast. I bet you in Canada, it's on normal broadcast. Same thing in the European countries. Like, I don't know. Well, let us know. I, I've, been, I've been watching the Japanese live broadcasts on the side, and yeah. uh, it's a little more delayed than the NBC one, but the coverage mm -hmm. is much better. And they actually pull the Japanese athletes aside right after their matches. <laughs> when to, they're to, tired and yeah, dead. To, <laughs> to interview them. Like it's uh -huh. literally, there's a mic right next to the mats and they pulled them over and interview them. So that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. It was cool. cool listening to that and the cover, the coverage. And I, I, I don't know, like I not a fan of the English coverage really. Um, well, I'm kind of, I'm surprised that they got Neil Adams to do it. Neil Adams and I think it's that German woman that does an yep. IGF. I can never remember her name, but I, I remember that she was yep. a German judo player. And so it was her and Neil Adams doing. I was like, oh, cool. So for all the English broadcasts, is it Neil Adams? Is 
because that's well, so, yeah, so far it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I did IGF be like, okay, here's our guys. I remember years ago, like, I think it was, God, I want to say Australia, maybe the one that was in the um, Sydney games. Mm-hmm. I remember watching the American, the American broadcast on like, I somehow found it as a kid. And I think it was um, Mike Swain that was doing mm-hmm. the, doing the broadcast oh, wow, for it. Right. Yeah. They have the people. I don't know yeah. why they, they only commentated one match. Like the first day it was the women's mat, the mat mm-hmm. two. And then the second yesterday it was the, the men's side. I'm like, why, why don't you have, you have like the, for the world championships, they had four commentators on the one of each, yeah. um, like they one, one commentator. Yeah. They had one comment at the world championship, that one commentary for each mat, so all four mats. Yeah. And then they would pick a team of two of them to do the finals. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't understand. Um, I guess we're, t- we're going to talking about the, the Olympics itself, but every time we talk about the Olympics or world championships, our viewership numbers just kind of dip. <laughs> and I think most people aren't just aren't interested in competitive judo, which is fair. I mean, yeah, I was just ranting to you about how I don't like <laughs> what I saw and Philippe too. Like we, we both were talking about mm-hmm. on the phone earlier, how we didn't like what we saw. But one thing, one other thing I didn't like for Olympics was they don't, put the name of the athletes on the screen they just put the country no uh, well the nbc one that i watched put their names up when they're coming up there when they're coming up but not like yeah. that's how you just tune in and you're like oh yeah. who's fighting you just oh, know they, it's korea versus japan that, but it's not that's the same the with igf up. though igf never puts no, up the I, names they, also they do. they do do they, they i do. don't remember that I, I'll sh- if you huh. go back and look, they do they do do that. <laughs> are you sure? I, are I, you lying to me? I'm not lying because <laughs> I was questioning myself. I'm like, hmm, did they always do that? Like, I, and I went I went yeah. back and looked, and then I was like, oh no, I, I, it wasn't just me. Like, okay, and no, also, that, yeah, no, no, go 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 on, go on. <laughs> well, also the back the back patch, their name is so freaking small, but the country code <laughs> is so much larger. Yeah, and I'm just I'm like trying to see like who is that from that country from like Belarus <laughs> like. Like uh, it, it's like they don't want the athletes to be known by their name or something. Like, <laughs> You're just a mindless robot for your country right now. And that was another thing you brought the back patch. Like I know Japanese stuff is all about it's like simplicity, mm-hmm. nice, clean art. Going from what Rio had, just splattered colors everywhere, white and black, this <laughs> big thing like this all over the place. And the back patch of this back patch being like uh, rising sun, white back patch. That's it. And I was like, wow, that is. Are we back in the 80s? Or, I, mean, I was going to say, it takes you, maybe, like, maybe they're going for that retro look for the first Olympics in Japan. Yeah, it was like <laughs> super plain and stuff. I was like, I was like, mm, I, it's cool. Uh, I don't know. Why even have okay, a so, patch? Just do the, the screen prints on, on the E's like they did back then, right? Yeah. <laughs> so for people that don't want to hear about the Judo Olympics and stuff, we're going to start talking about that now. Well, we're going to talk about the first two days, our, what we thought about it, the matches, and some historical events that happened. So they're in Japan now. They're having the Olympics at the Budokan, the same place. Was it? Yeah. Um, yeah, same place. Yeah, yeah, the same place that they started the Olympics back in 1964. So the first time judo was in the Olympics, it was at the Budokan in 1964. Second time they're having Olympics in Tokyo again. They're having the same exact place. That to me is cool as fuck. All right. <laughs> you're getting the mat. Just like, it's like you look at the, you just look at it's like, Judo got started here. This is what made judo international sport right here. It's like when I whenever I go to Japan, I kind of want to go to the Tokyo. The, I not kind. I really want to go to the Tokyo Dome. Yeah. And it's not because I want to watch the I want to watch the Giants play or nothing. Even though I'm from the Bay, so Giants and Giants, I got you there. <laughs> but it's more that I grew up watching Pride. I love watching Pride. So when I watching Pride and K1, this is where it has some of the most biggest events. So I, I want to go there. So it's the same thing here. Going to the Budokan, be like judo it's like started a here. It's yeah, it's like a pilgrimage. Pilgrim. Should I wear a black hat and some buckles and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> or did I do a Japanese? So I, I shave my head and wear a robe. <laughs> I carry my stick with me. <laughs> cling, cling, cling. I do, I do want to do the Shikoku pilgrimage. I don't know if I told you that, but that's like a two month, um, two month excursion. So yes, you wear the all white outfit and stuff. And you're with to a walk hat and you walk, you walk around the yeah. island. Yeah. And visit yeah. all the temples. There's a thing that this is not a personal thing now. There's a thing if something happens in my life, if a certain thing happens in my life, I kind of want to go do that. Kind of, I'm going to go do that if something happens in my life. But 
kind of hope it doesn't <laughs> at the same well, time. <laughs> I, I mean, people in America don't usually get to take long vacations. Um, unlike some people in Europe that get mandatory three months vacation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot, what a lot of people do is that they break up the pilgrimage into two parts. So you like do it one part and then you go home and the next year come back and start at the same spot and you continue. So I, I might do that. Yeah, just take a judogi with you, your white robe, your stick and your hat, and I will call you Lord Raiden. <laughs> no, so, but yeah, okay, go, no, ahead. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think we we're going to talk about the same thing. We're, we're going to. OK, so let's start off with the first day. All right. So the first day they start off with the women's match and um, the finals was who was it? It was um, no start off with the it was a, so let's start off with the which man start first with the men's fast match first let's start with the men's let's start with the men's yeah all right so start with the men's so go ahead since you're looking at it you tell me about it i mean uh i think for me the person that stood out the most was uh young and way from uh taiwan taipei mm -hmm. i was just about to ask you about yep. that because i i've always been i've been actually telling my friends about him like for the last couple of years and mm -hmm. kind of people just don't give a shit and they don't understand that a lot of these taiwanese athletes actually train and visit japan all the time mm -hmm. so their level of judo is really high um what surprised me about him was his nawaza like um he didn't do much submissions but you can see he was putting on that pressure on the ground a mm -hmm. lot and I, I was super impressed by that there's some elements of bjj in there that you can see with the, the knee cuts and the spinning around that he does Mm -hmm. um also his stamina like you you saw some one of the th complaints i saw on reddit was talking about how how many of the matches went to golden score mm -hmm. um and it was just ridiculous that's another topic but <laughs> he fought like some of some of these golden score matches and he still looks fresh as hell mm -hmm. so i hope they make him pee in the cup after that silver medal mm -hmm. <laughs> make sure he's not on any peds or something like that but um check that boy check him right now <laughs> that, that was some insane stamina he had um uh, i was really disappointed by the final match though um with him against uh takato um yeah i i didn't agree with some of the shido calls but i don't think it was something I don't think it was like a thing that was favoring the Japanese in this particular match because over the past few years, um, well, let me back up a little bit and talk about the instances of how you got Shido's. Most mm -hmm. one of the Shido's was grip break you did. Um, yeah. And the other two Shido's was when Takado had him with a power grip and pushed him down. Yeah. And when he was pushed down, Yang, like he, he used his arm to block the hit from him like entering and they gave him a Shido for blocking the hit. Yeah. Defensive posture. But to me, it's at the same time Takato was like smashing him down with that grip yeah. and without attacking, or at least without any meaningful attacks, because all Takato was doing was like doing that leg tap thing. Yeah. Like yeah. the Ashi was a leg tap. Like he's it's not really an attack. Well, so it's, it's the I whole thing of like you make yourself look like you're attacking and stuff. And mm -hmm. I understand like I, people always get mad about the like when you're crushing somebody. And when I was in the refing clinics and stuff, and when I ref, they always tell you the person has to defend the crush first. So it's always like, if I start crushing it you- It was defending. <laughs> most likely I'm not gonna get called because you have to defend yourself. You have to get out of that position. Now, if I continue that, you're supposed to get called. But this again, it get about, uh, how was it? Um, Takato is that, I remember what it was like, I think it was in 2019, I think it was the world championships. There was a throw that someone did to him and he got, he should have got wasadi on him or equal on him. But because it's him, because he's famous, because he wanted to do so well, because he's so good, they let it slide. And I can see people argue about- saw a lot of that, yeah. Yeah, and I can see the people arguing about this also. But the reason I wanted to bring up a, uh, with Yang with you is that, you know, he's from Chinese Taipei, he's from Taiwan, you know, it's your people. He's one of the, he did very, very well from a country that's not supposed to do well. Are you happy for him? Are you proud of him? Are you like, that's my boy right there? Yeah, that's my point because I've been, I saw the potential in him and a lot of mm -hmm. people, like, I don't know if you saw Travis Stevens do a, a breakdown. Mm -hmm. He mentioned like, oh, people don't know about Taiwan, but they train with Japanese judokas, but he didn't have them go really far. They actually had him losing to Russia, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess the Russian guy got knocked out early. And I, I thought he was going to go to the final block at the very least, always. I, I didn't expect him to win, like, but... I'm happy for him. Um, great judo, great stamina. But going going back to what I was saying, the smashing down in the last few couple of years, 
I see that a lot and they tend to favor the person smashing pushing. the person down. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with push the pushing, pushing people out at the edge. Yeah. They usually favor the guy pushing the person out. Mm -hmm. So because the whole thing, you're supposed to defend. And that's one thing that when I took a clinic was that they're telling us and when I went to the USGF one, I mean, the USA Judo one was that you have to defend yourself. You have to fight back. You can't, you can't look for the ref to defend you. It's that, kind of like MMA, you know, defend yourself at yeah, all times. I, I get it, but I, so let's use, let's say pushing, for example. Mm -hmm. it, it, if I'm at the edge and I'm pushing back and you push harder, then I'm still like, am I supposed to push even harder? Like I'm defending yes. myself by pushing. Not pushed, but it's not pushed. You gotta remember this is what people always think about. That's why I tell people why we start competing. Everyone thinks that it's just push and pull straight forward and back and forth. You can circle out. Okay. You if he keeps pushing it, it me, it does open you up to throws when you do that. It does open me up to throws, but that's why you got to watch your side and stuff. Or if he's pushing really hard, you go for sacrifice Tomonage or something. Yeah, I'm at the edge. Yeah. What do they do? If I go for Tomonage, it's going to at least look like I'm doing something. I'm pulling guard. I think the rules need to be clarified. It's a mm -hmm. such a gray area that to people, especially even people like me, it looks like you're favoring, favoring someone. And mm -hmm. it, this really needs to be clarified because it's really inconsistent how they are calling these calls sometimes and it's it's in the rules that saying if you smash someone down without attacking you should get a shido i mean yeah. worst comes worst give a shido to both of them right mm -hmm. they do that for some calls like yeah uh when people patty cake they give shido <laughs> to both of them right yeah so yes. if someone's not defending the push and someone's just straight up pushing without attacking then you should give shido to both of them same mm -hmm. thing with the smashing down and defending like give a shido to both of them yeah i think that's now, the but correct call but I agree with you. Like, I hate seeing, like, we talked about this last time, World Championship match, match, the World Championship episode we did. I hate seeing people win a World Championship, win an Olympic Championship, or even a Grand Prix Shido. Championship on Shido's. It's like, yay. I, I get it. It's part of the rules. I get you can win that way, playing the match, playing smart yep. and stuff. And I talk about playing the rules all the time when we, when I teach, know the rules so you can understand them to use them against people sometimes. But I hate seeing world championships and I hate seeing Olympic champions like, oh, so what do you can put in your highlight reel for your Olympic champion? Uh, the Shido, that, that's what I'll put so, on my reel. <laughs> it's like, you're not yeah. gonna have that cool Ipon, you're not gonna have that cool Uchimata, that Tamunaga or the, the cool like pin, like, damn, he controlled that guy. Look at that pin right there. No, it's gonna be like, yeah, look how he smashed him and he pushed him out the ring and yes, champion right there. So when you listen to Neil Adams commentate, mm -hmm. and also when we go to our ref clinics, right there, uh, our coach clinics, they'll talk about how in the final block or the later matches, they tend to be more careful, like hesitant to give out these kind of shitos. Yeah. And you they'll give these kind of shitos during the elimination, like like it's supposed to be. But then mm -hmm. when it gets to like the, the semifinals, quarterfinals and the finals, they, they don't want stuff to, to end that way. And yeah. A lot of times you'll see them let things slide, which is a di I think is wrong, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. Well, so but, whole in, thing in, in, but in this case, yeah. I think they were kind of Shido happy and giving the Taiwanese guy <laughs> Shido's, right? He didn't let us, they didn't let it slide at all. Like, oh, right, Shido, Shido. Like, uh, and so that's where I think it's a little unfair. Yeah. In that sense. That's another thing about when it comes to world championships, Olympic championships, Grand Prix and stuff, they'll get to the medal rounds and like those stuff that I watch and you get what they call in America. I don't know if they might call it in other countries also, but they call it playoff rules. So it's like, oh, it's a playoff rule. So it's, it's a little bit more lenient, it's playoff rules. So they really want to see who wins, who's a better player. And like, it's not fair. I get it. It's not fair, but it's playoff rules, you know? And yeah. I, like I said, I feel bad for, for, uh, uh, for uh, Takato because He's gonna get this reputation of like getting oh, yeah. a lot of favorites. My, my Japanese friends are already saying. Yeah. Some of them are saying they don't like the way he won. Yeah, because he didn't get because he won that world championship. Like, I think it was 2019. Like mm -hmm. he won the world championship that year with some calls where like there was a one that I swear to God it was bland. I got a bunch of people sending stuff to me. Hey, since he won, was this Ipono Wazadi? I was like, oh shit. Technically, if it was me and by what it should be, yeah, he lost that match. But this is him. And they don't they don't want him to lose unless it's a good clean throw most likely and it's just a play it's it's favoritism and he's gonna get his reputation and who knows let's see if he retires after this if he's gonna continue or not because who knows if you want to continue once you get a bad re reputation because people might attack you more or the rest might end up being harder on you later because they don't because they want to get that stigma away from you i but do okay. get why i do get why he did that though because which is going to go into what i think is the match of the day for mm -hmm. that day was takato versus medov from uh, mm -hmm. Kazakhstan, 
that was like a long golden score match that was actually worth that golden score. It's not the kind of golden score where they're just stalling the whole time, you know? So you guys haven't watched it, go watch that match, Takato versus Medov. It was freaking amazing. Good judo all, all around. And that probably drained him and caused his coach and him to probably come up with a game plan of going into the finals fighting like that. So mm-hmm. that's my my uh, opinion. And you can't really blame him for that. Um, but there's many layers, like the ref, the rules, and then the game plan. And yeah. yeah. All right. So that was the men's match. Oh, by the so way, the- Smedov was my pick for the win, for uh, the person taking gold. But Really? Yeah, that, he was my pick. Okay. All right. So they had the women's match was the minus 48 kilos the first day. Mm-hmm. And that was against, I'm not going to say her name, but the girl from Kosovo, because Chris I cannot Nigi. say her name. Chris Nigi. Chris Nigi. Chris Nigi. Chris Nigi. She, she, was my, she was my pick for uh, well, she, gold. Yeah, well, the thing is that it. she was in the finals with the Japanese player uh, with, um, what's her name? Um, Tuna Fanaki. Ten- yeah, tuna, tuna. Tuna. I keep calling her Tuna because freaking my friend Travis calls her Tuna. Tuna Tonaki. Tuna Tonaki. Tuna Tonaki. Yeah. Tuna, tuna. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tsunaki, she's like, she had a great match. I thought it was a really good match and stuff. Going against the world number one, you're in your own country, you're fa- like, not your favorite win, but you got that. Pre- and that's another thing about the Japanese players. You can imagine you're in Japan doing a Japanese sport, representing your country. Like, there has to be immense pressure on all the Japanese players right now. This mm-hmm. be so, like, you want to talk about like psychological pressure and stuff, being mentally correct and mentally right to compete. This has to be one of the hardest times to compete in their life. Because think about it. How many times are people going to compete in the Olympics? And then you add it's in your own country that developed and created the sport. This is like a once in a, this is like a perfect storm, you know? So in my opinion, she did very well, but in the end she lost by, what was it? Was Zadi? Um, yeah, she lost by yeah. Zadi. I can't remember. What throw was it? It was, um, it was Uchimata. Yeah. So she got thrown with Uchimata for Wazadi, And that was pretty much it after that. And Kosovo won. You know, it was good for her. The girl of Kosovo, she's ranked number one in the world. Um, Their coach is amazing, by the way. I was just talking to Philippe about this. I'm like, what? What is yeah. the guy's secret? And Philippe, obviously, he's not going to share it with you. You know, like, <laughs> he's not going to share. It. It, it's just like it, it's a perfect example of how if you're it, the, being a great competitor is not necessary to be a great coach to produce champions. Mm. There's coaching is a different skill set than competing. Mm-hmm. I mean, competing helps, but it's not. Well, it's, it's not, it's it's not all great competitors make great coaches and not a, and not all great. Um, and if you're a bad competitor, it doesn't mean you're not going to be a good coach. There's yep. different levels and different things. So that was a really good match. You guys should check it out. The other thing I want to talk about that same day is I'm a big fan of uh, Mungbot, the, Mungbot, the Mongolian yeah. player. She's one of my I, favorites. Yeah. yeah, she's one of my favorites too. And it's because she combines her Tachiwaza and Nawaza so mm-hmm. well. So she took bronze. And so this is going to make her that... Um, and I think it was for the other bronze medalists also. No, no, no. She took, she won world championships, didn't she? Who, Mungbot? Uh, no, no. Okay, so back to Mungbot. If they're traveling yeah. on is something else. Just going. Okay, so but the thing with Mungbot is that she's top three in the world. Three weeks ago at the world championships, she took third. Mm-hmm. So three weeks later, she comes to the Olympics, takes third again. So she is like the cemented third best in the world. That is just, in my opinion, that's super cool. Yeah. Do people forget that she's been around forever. She's third. She's 31. Yeah, in, in judo age, that's really old, especially for <laughs> for this weight class for minus yeah. forty eight kilograms. Mm. That's that's crazy, and what what I think it's sad is, unless you really follow judo, I think people are going to forget about her. She's not going to be cemented in history, kind of like the the um, the Abes, but she's in, one, she's one of the most judo history. Yeah, judo in, history. Yeah, in judo yeah, history, she's not going to be considered like Yamashita or Inoue or because she she consistently only gets third or yeah or goes so, to the hey, final block in Mongolia she's probably huge I bet yeah. this might be this might be like front headline news in Mongolia today or yesterday exactly yeah. Yeah. third in the world championships and third in the Olympics in three weeks one year one yeah. year I'm on both podiums like that's another thing how many people can say I was on both podiums in one yeah. year that's she 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 can. So unlike some of the the best in the world, right, that we know, mm-hmm. like Ono and them, she I see her in every single freaking tournament. You see her yeah. all the time competing, and she's always and always in the final block. Doesn't mm-hmm. always get gold, but she's always in the final block. Yeah. That's some crazy consistency for yeah. that age. And also, like you said, 
great Tachiwaza, great Nawaza, like overall threat just to, to everyone. And yeah, I wonder, just, I wonder if I wonder if Chan Zan ever trained with her when she was in Mongolia. We should ask her. Yeah, yeah, we, we should, should ask her yeah. next time whenever she shows it up to the yeah. dojo. Um, All right, so those are my highlights. About, for, do you, you, you don't want to talk about? <laughs> we didn't talk about Bila. Did um, that was yeah. everyone's favorite for going into uh, winning this whole thing. But I, I personally didn't think she was going to win because mm -hmm. I just think mentally she wouldn't be able um, to take the pressure. She's yeah. still kind of young. Yeah. Plus, um, I've noticed over the last year she's gotten taller. So I think the I personally think the weight cut's going to get to her for this weight class. Mm -hmm. And um, plus, she she people were studying to counter her, like uh, Tanaki, who finally beat her, like saw her uh, Sotomaki Komi's coming from a mile away and just like mm -hmm. ne ne neutralized it. So yeah, that's all. That's all I had. So okay, no, no problem. No, that's add what you want to add, man. No problem. So then you want to talk, start talking about day two? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So day two starts. All right. So let's, dun, start, dun, with dun. The, let's start with the, the women's this time. No, let's just start with look at this shit. All right. So I was talking <laughs> about Japan. I was talking about competing at the Budokan. I'm talking about competing where judo started in America. I'm talking about now we're talking about family. We're talking about hey, like, I think people think I'm talking about I'm, Fast I'm and just, Furious. I'm thinking of the Vin Diesel meme right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> when I put that in my head, I was like, you gotta say like Vin Diesel family <laughs> you don't know what it is about family right? so, <laughs> john c is my family apparently now <laughs> so we're going to talk about the abe family which you don't know what i'm talking about already like you had to come you had to know about us all right so in japan they had a brother and sister duo that are competing the same day in their same like weight classes for men and women so we had uh yuta abe she goes over the finals. She wins in golden score with this crazy pin. Like it was the French woman kept on like going and attacking, attacking. So Age would just smash, like not like smash her down, but just like to block mm. all her injuries, block her entries and kind of go into Niwaza. They keep trying to pin her over. Bouchard, her over was, my, pins and Bouchard stuff. was my pick to win actually. Was she? Yes. I, I had Abe the entire time. Well, I, 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 I you taught Abe the, I had both. Yeah, I mean, you, you taught, she taught us good, but I, I kind of figured she's also young. So I thought she would yeah. crumble under pressure, but I was wrong, I guess. And yeah. Bouchard is just scrappy and she's very tactical versus mm -hmm. Obvious just pure skill. So I thought maybe Bouchard had a chance. So yeah. well, I think that's why Bouchard kept on like attacking the entire timeline, not yeah. letting Abe try to set up anything, just set up any throws, just attack, attack, attack. Try, maybe trying to Shido her out. Maybe trying to yeah. play a game of Shido. That's, that's, like, that's her tactics usually. She yeah, does, that's that why she, she does that. Uh, Yoko Satemi. Oh, I'm, I'm sounding the Neil Adams now. That Yoko Otoshi <laughs> that she does. Um, some people call it Katsuguruma, but I think it's Yoko Otoshi. Um, uh -huh. She spams that because it forces people to not be able to counter her. So mm -hmm. that's her, that she spams all the time. And that's her tactics to cheat her out people most of the time. So they go into golden score and it's still a good match. Like they're still fighting back and forth and stuff. It's not a boring match. I know some people might find it boring, but to mm -hmm. me, it wasn't goes into golden score. And it's just, it's like just past four minutes, I believe. And it's like, uh, so she comes in for some sort of throw. I can't, what throw did she come in? Uchimata. She went in for Ushimata. I think was it Ushimata point. she came in for. Yeah. He's talking about Abe, right? Yeah, Abe. Yeah, she went for Ushimata at one point. Yeah, but whatever. It gets down to the ground. She gets in this weird, crazy, like, body lock underneath the head. Yeah, pin so thing. that was, I actually asked you about it at the dojo one uh, time. I don't know if you remember, but it's it's considered, um, it's called the Funakubo Katame pin because uh -huh. it's uh, popularized by Hiroko, not, not Hiroko, Haruka um, Funakubo. So mm -hmm. she does it a lot to win her matches, and um, apparently, she popularized it. In her she learned it from her university, and that's where Abe trained. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women judokas in Japan do that. And which, we're gonna start breaking that down to dojo. We're gonna start working on this pin. This thing was crazy. Yeah, this so, was nuts. <laughs> so I tried. I tried it myself, but I feel like it looks like it's a pin for smaller people because i don't see mm -hmm. it in the heavier your arms, classes that's another thing i was thinking about your yeah. arms might be too long to do it because it was just yeah, tight too much, too had much it gap on. the way i do it yeah yeah so yeah we need we need to do a breakdown of that so <laughs> judo breakdown <laughs> maybe all right so she wins gold that's nuts okay so she wins gold now she's a two-time world champion and olympic champion all right then her brother competes 
And her brother's the one that had that crazy match uh, that everyone knew about a couple months ago when it was him versus um, Mariyama. And everyone's like, oh, well, Mariyama is the, the current world champion. He should be there and stuff. And Mariyama goes to this year's world championship three weeks ago, wins and um, becomes world champion. So he's two-time world champion also. They're talking about Mariyama right now. Yeah. But Abe beats him in that crazy 30-minute match that they had. You know how you 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 know how I'm unhappy about Philippe is unhappy you know, about that match too. So hey, but this match right here, him fighting this that proves my point. Okay, he finds ways to win. He goes out there and he, and he fights. Hey, I, I didn't and say Abe couldn't win. I just thought Mariyama deserved it more. <laughs> so. I understand it, but it goes to my thing. Any given Sunday, whoever yeah. wins the match or wins the tournament should go on. That's how I feel. Okay, that's how I, that's how I was talking about. Well, Any my problem Sunday. my problem was with the rules of that yeah. match was that it wasn't IJF rules clearly, <laughs> and there were some favoring of Abe. You could see it when, uh, in the way the Shido was called. Abe grabbed, touched the legs. No Shido was called. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So la 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 la, I can hear <laughs> you. La, la, la. <laughs> It's okay. Like, but it, it is it, it kind of, and we could talk about a match after this, after we talk about his gold medal match that we that mm -hmm. I showed you earlier. I actually sent you an Instagram about it. Um, so Abbe's in the final. He's against the, um, the what is it? The, the, uh, God, what was his name? Uh, Just a Georgian fighter. I, I yeah, can't Georgian. remember all their names, but he's a Georgian fighter. And Marcus Philly. Yeah. So they, Marcus yep. Feely. It's always a Marcus Feely. It's like, how many Marcus Feelys are there? <laughs> okay, Marcus <Feely>. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they have their match. He goes in there, throws them for, throws them with Wazadi, and then fights them off for another two or three minutes after that. Like, yep. and he's, and he thinks that even though he got the Wazadi for his, uh, for his Uchi, what's it, Uchimata that they threw him with? No, it was just, uh, I thought, I thought it was a Soto again, wasn't it? No, yeah, it was a Soto because he kept, they talked about that, how he kept hitting it on people. We talked about yeah. that, we'll talk about it later also. Oh, I, I, I just remembered uh, we had listeners who are beginners that complained about us using Japanese terms. So <laughs> that, you have to learn them. That's what it is. Okay. So, That's so, <laughs> uh, Mario, not Mario, my, <laughs> Abe. Abe has a sick Sode Surikamigoshi, which is, for those who don't know, the sleet of uh, the, throw where you grab the sleeves and do like a hip throw from it. And um, most people are wary of that throw that he does. So they, they, they're preparing for it and he's caught three different matches, three different people. He caught people faking into that throw and then changing directions into an Osoto Gari. So usually he sends them airborne and in one of the matches uh, a couple of tournaments ago, he knocks someone out cold because the Damn left straight. line is so hard on it. Um, Damn straight. <laughs> that that was the throw that they would, he he was using. That was, uh, but yeah, so I, he won three matches yeah. with that in the in the final round. He did some same thing. Came in, hit him with this beautiful Sotagati, got Wazadi from it. But most people would be like, okay, I'm sitting in Wazadi. Now I'm gonna defend. It's two minutes left in the round. I'm just gonna defend, defend, defend. No, he kept going for Ipon Sonagis. He was going for drop Sonagis. I think he went for Uchimata even, mm -hmm. and he went for um, like I don't know what you'd call it, but the Georgian went for like kind of a a belly to belly suplex and yeah. tried to reverse it and land on top of the guy, which in my opinion should have been Ipon, maybe Wazadi, like the way it was. But I think they said that it was outside the ring. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't go through, but either way he wins a match becomes a gold medal. So him and his sister, so get this him and his sister, both two time world champions, one time Olympic champions. So in that house alone, they have four world championships and two gold Olympic medals. Damn. His dad is like thick too. I don't know if you've ever seen his dad. His, I, That's I sat, thick. I, oh I, yeah. I, I, I sat next I sat next to his dad. He looks like a, a surfer bro kind of guy. Uh -huh. He's like really <laughs> tan. And his he's wearing these short shorts and his thighs are like the size of my freaking head. Like <laughs> Yeah, his dad is uh Looks exactly like them, actually. So, <laughs> uh, did he have blonde highlights? <laughs> he did, actually. <laughs> Seriously, awesome. his, his, his dad did. That's awesome. That's so <laughs> cool. But yeah, think, so again, we go back to it. You're in Japan at the Budokan, the birthplace of the Judo Olympics, representing your country. Your sister goes up before you. You're going up against your sister. Think of vice versa. Your brother's going up after you. This is a family affair right here. And both of you take gold for Japan. 
not silver, not bronze. You guys both take gold for Japan in the birthplace of Jack, of judo. That is amazing. That is crazy to yeah. me. So that was an amazing match. And you should watch obvious matches. Like they're all good matches. Yeah, they're pretty and I want to get, yeah. so I want to bring that back up to you, Anthony, because this is a match that we talked about before. So at the world championships, uh, Mariyama faced that, that Mongolian guy. Parallel. John Dunparalay, yeah. Yeah, you say that 10 times fast. John Dunparalay, yeah. <laughs> Which has that dog fighting judo style that like, just, he's just a dog mm-hmm. fighter. He just goes out there, ugly judo, just goes out there and gives people a hard time. And how did Mariyama beat him? He shielded him out, was he it? He shielded him out because he kept Uchimata in nonstop. And only, only I mean, the Uchimata didn't work because of his legs being so freaking yeah. long, but it caused him to defend the whole time. So he had to, that he couldn't really attack. It was just a different way of winning. Just he yeah. couldn't throw him, but the guy had no answer to him, so. But he didn't throw him. He didn't throw him. He, he shielded him out. But there it was. If you watch the video, hey, he does have super some, long. That's just legs. how judo is. Some sometimes you just have this one person that's your uh, kryptonite. Your kryptonite. He's such a he's such a Mariyama defender. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm a fan of Mariyama's so, judo a lot. So. Let's get back to Abe's now judo when he fights him. So he fought him, and this is one of the guys where he came in for his sore, reversed the angle, and osotoed him. Just yep. osotoed him to the mat. Boom. And I was it Ippon or Wazari? I don't know. I haven't written down what it was. I think it might have been Wazari. It might have so been Wazari. Tall yeah. guy. There weren't there were literally weren't that many Ippons this tournament so far. So. Yeah. so it goes back to the argument where uh where Abe beat that guy. Beat him, handled people, took gold medal in the Olympics. Okay. I think Japan made the right decision during that match, let him fight. Where Mariyama, I love Mariyama, I think beautiful style, amazing judo player, such technical dude. But you see, just as they fight right there, three weeks apart. Okay, not like okay, it was like a year. So you think he would have lost to him? Is what you're saying? You you know he has a hard time with international with uh, European players, not international players, with European players. Mariana? Because they fight so much a stronger style. No, I think if you look at the world championship, he dominated everyone except for like he he didn't dominate as hard as he used to, but he was still like dominating them. I don't know. I don't know. But the dog got the pasture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was you're right. He would probably struggle a little more with the the Mongolian athlete, but I think he would have just like ended the other people just as fast as Abe did. So mm-hmm. So so look at the past two days of judo, some great matches. Hopefully you can find a way to watch them unless you're here in the US yeah. and you have to struggle. We, we didn't talk about Lombardo. Um Philippe was like really gung ho about Lombardo winning and um he just I was talking to Philippe and we're both like he uh-huh. looks tired and deflated. Like mm-hmm. something he thinks is mental. I think yeah. maybe his wrist was all wrapped up. I don't know, one of his wrists and he mm-hmm. looks like he was favoring it. Plus he just competed in the world championships. Yeah. So I, I thought maybe it was a physical thing. Like maybe having an athlete peak twice like this in a short amount of time is maybe not the best idea. But yeah. Philippe was like, no, he, it was like a mental thing. He probably succumbed to pressure was what he, Philippe said. Okay. So, and then there's on ball, on ball kind of blew it too. But um, I don't think he performed well. It just wasn't his day. Like mm-hmm. he got caught. So. Anyone else you want to talk about? No. No, <laughs> we didn't. We well, didn't go did, over did, the women's yet, right? Oh, we did. No, because yeah. I didn't take notes. I watched the women's, but I didn't take notes on the women's because I watched this. I watched these just an hour before we were gonna get on. Yeah. We were gonna get on here. So some some other uh, we talked about Bouchard and Uta already, but on the women's mm-hmm. fifty two, some of the other notable um, people to watch. Delgado, Angelica Delgado won a match with a great. Uh, I guess it's a so one handed Sode or like yeah, she won her day. opening match. Yeah, and that was she a lost big, and... That was one of the big pawns throws I saw. So yeah, props to her. That was great. Um, Good job! Yay! Yeah, and um, who else? I got uh, Chelsea Giles from Great Britain. Her family. I, every time I see her name. I sat next to her mom. I sat next to her mom at the world championships. How many people did you sit next to at the world championships? It's a lot of, a lot of people cause they shift around a lot, but um, uh-huh. I sat, I sat next to the um, Yokozuna too for sumo. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> Chelsea Giles, I, every time we hear her name, I just hear her mom screaming, 
Kelsey, like, like right next to me, like over and over and over again. Uh-huh. So, but she, she got bronze too, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah she did bronze. She uh, has she a really got... scrappy style of judo that mm. just like, I think was great to, to, to watch. Um, yeah, that's a great Britain had a medal. So that's, that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. who was, who won the other, uh, bronze medal? Uh, Giro, um, Giro Frida Odette, the Italian girl. Oh yeah. 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 She could, she was the previous, the previous Olympic champion, right? Yeah. 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 And then the men's that had the Brazilian that should have been Shido'd for the arm bar that he did. Yeah. There were, I was talking to Philippe about this. Well, maybe we, now, now we can get into like, yeah, why not um, just get into it. There's a lot of arm lock throws that went, that got, that slipped by. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know why they did that, but everything, it wasn't just the final block. It was even the elimination rounds. There was a lot of arm lock throws that they just didn't call. Interesting. And I, again, back to consistency, right? You have to, yeah. you just got to be consistent with the calls. It's just, they did, wow. the video, they did the whole video replay thing. So it's like, you're doing a video replay. It was clearly an arm lock and you're still not calling it. So well, to me, even the throw that he got the Wazadi on, that he got the Wazadi for mm-hmm. that got that won the match. Yeah. Even that throw, when he did it, I was like, that's an armbar throw. Yeah. When I saw it, I, when I first saw it, I was like, that's an armbar throw. But the game was Zadi, and I was like, okay. But he entered in an armbar style, then kind of turned it into yeah. like this really weird rolling Epon, I guess maybe. You call, I don't mm-hmm. know how he turned rolled it, but he rolled into a Zadi. But when he first entered for that one, I was like, that's an armbar throw. And then later, after they were that penalty time because his nose and the head yeah. bud and everything else they were doing to each other. Out yeah, that's, a, that's the other thing. Like, uh, Zantaraya, that was another match. Like he headbutted and like knocked the shit out of the the, <laughs> the Spanish guy to the point where he got he had to lose because this bleeding wouldn't stop. You only mm-hmm. get you only get three chances. Well, two actually on the third one, you're you're out. You only get two chances to go to the doctor and stop the bleeding from the same cut. So if you get a different cut, then you reset. You have get three chances for that cut. But mm-hmm. that one place that he was bleeding out of, out of. Um, he couldn't stop bleeding, so he lost. Yeah. yeah to the me, it's I, like, let me start headbutting people. <laughs> then, like, you know, in. like. But the, uh, who did the Brazilian fight anyways? I, yeah, I'm totally blanking uh, on it now. I just watched it an hour ago. But the guy that he fought that he had, that they headbutted or clashed heads, at the end of the match, he had a huge knot on his head. I thought it was yeah. eye rod first. No, he, there was two cuts. That's how, yeah. that's how much he was freaking knocking the, sh- the crap out of him. Yeah, like he had a knot on his head, and I was like, "What the hell?" I thought it was an eyebrow at first. Like, no, no, that's a knot from a headbutt. That was from one of the headbutts. But yeah, but yeah, it was, it was Israeli guy. Yeah, I think it was. Oh wait, you talk, you're talking about the Brazilian guy. I was talking about the yeah. the, Span, the Spanish guy. Okay, you're talking about the other one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm mixing them up now. That's another thing. There were so many cuts and bleeding mm-hmm. in this tournament. So, I I think they should lax up a, a bit on the bleeding stuff. Like. Yeah. I think it's like ridiculous that if you can't stop the bleeding, then you lose. Like, <laughs> like just clean, clean up the mats afterwards, you know? So <laughs> they're doing it anyway. <laughs> get get Stitch out there, you know? Get Stitch. He can fix this stuff. You know, he'll put the cause in there. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not allowed to do anything to the wound any, anyhow. Like like, yeah. cut, like the, in boxing and stuff, they have cut. Yeah. They're not allowed to do any kind of that stuff. They're only able to like wrap, wrap you up like a mummy. So... <laughs> You end up looking like Travis Stevens, one eye showing. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny how they don't want matches to end in Cheetos, but they're okay with matches ending in, in disqualification because you're bleeding. <laughs> like, so we should tell Johnny next time he goes international, like Johnny, yeah, just head all right, people. So just grab guys and just headbutt them real quick, all right? Just <laughs> get to like cut in there, win the match, and then keep going, all right? <laughs> I mean, I I don't th- haven't seen that really, but you kind of already see people doing things like kicking people in the shins and stuff. That was there. another okay. What match was that where they were like bl- someone blatantly were kicking somebody and it was yeah, like, in the middle match heard, you, because there's no crowds. You heard the pop. Yeah, like, and I was like, that ain't no Ashi was right. That's just a roundhouse kick, and, right? And uh, the ref actually stopped. Later. The ref actually stopped to give the guy a second to like recover. But yeah. I was like, where where's the Shido? Like, yeah, <laughs> where's the Shido so, from? Yeah. It? That's a blatant hit right there. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking like, I I don't know. Overall, Philippe and I weren't really happy with the the rolling was not even rolling epons. It was like rolling wazaris and mm-hmm. um, the shidos, the grip fighting, just a lack overall lack of epon like real epon throws. Really? Like, okay. 
beautiful it's judo yeah yeah it's funny because all these stupid rules that they enacted like you know like grabs and all these grip breaking rules was to try and push these guys to do those big pawn throws mm-hmm. but instead now you have people doing these half-assed yoko coca throws now twice yeah. and they win the match with it it's like <laughs> the total it's, opposite of what they were getting so that's one thing i hate so much i hate this wazari judo that's just i'm just not a fan of it's it not, I, 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 I call it a wazari judo is like a stretch i think it, I, I understand you go you go this this coca judo we have now i get it i understand it i understand like like i talk about playing playing the game you know knowing the rules like that bending that breaking rule but you use them to your advantage and i get that but you don't watch judo for with like little rolling things. You want to see the mm-hmm. big throws in judo. So you need to encourage that more somehow. Well, they, they were trying to encourage it with those rules, like I said, but they're yeah, getting yeah. opposite effect. And it, it's also funny because at the same time, they're trying to cater to the casual viewers and like people who don't train <laughs> judo, right? But the casual, how are they going to watch it? They can't watch it on NBC app. They well, can't watch yeah. it on Peacock. <laughs> what casuals don't watch it right now? You there's can't actually, watch it on YouTube. <laughs> there's actually on the judo subreddit, there's a lot of casual viewers and BJJ people asking these questions like, why are they stopping them on the ground? That's another complaint. It was like the Nawaza was not, they didn't give enough time for Nawaza, which is weird because in the world tours the past year, they gave a lot more time for Nawaza and people are applauding mm-hmm. them for that. Mm-hmm. And they just stopped doing that in this Olympic cycle. I don't, I don't understand why. See, you think there was less than it was me from the matches that I watched. I thought they gave them plenty of time in a while. So when people were stalling and not doing anything, that's when it would lift them up. But if someone was going for something, in my opinion, in my eyes, it looked like if you're attempting something or going for something and you can get it, they will let you go. I think in the final block, that was true. Mm-hmm. But in the elimination round, that wasn't the case, I think. No. OK. I, yeah, that's per- personally that's my view. But um, where was I getting at with this before I talked about the Nawaza? Oh, the, ca- the ca- yeah, the casual viewers were all asking, like, why did the Taiwanese guy get his third Shido? Why did this? It's like they made the rule so complicated that normal people don't understand it. And when they understand mm-hmm. it, they don't agree with it because they think it's ridiculous. So now you just like it. So, so next week not, we have our viewing party. We have to bring our geese with us. Yeah. We can explain. OK, so he did this. So therefore, yeah, that was illegal could. this way. <laughs> we I mean, it's it's funny because they're trying to. Get, they're trying to make people do the bigger pawn throws and they're not getting that to get in Cocos and Yukos. Mm. And they're trying to make it so it's easier to watch for beginners, but the beginners either don't get it or they think it's stupid, the rules. Yeah. So <laughs> what we're all unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> we're all unhappy. No one can be happy with judo right now. Well, we, we all know the rule, rule change is going to come after this Olympic cycle. Always. So, As always. I really think they need to bring back, like bring back, like, um, uh, I don't want to say bring back Coca's. No, they had to bring back Yuko. Bring back, yeah. But I'm, not, I'm saying, like, not bring back all the way to Coca's, I mean. Like, advantage. Like a, it's, and Coca. it's like a BJJ version of advantage. And advantage. Yeah, that's and that's how I explained to people back when we had the uh, Yuko's yeah. and Wazadis and Coca's and everything. That's how I explain to people. Like, it's not a full point. Some people call it a quarter point, but it's not because they can't build. Think of it as, like, an advantage. And I think people are like, oh, okay, that makes sense. All right, I get that. And I think they should bring that back. But it has to be an actual attempt at something. It can't be like the old freaking Colkas where just as long as I attempt something and drug you to the ground, you got a Colka mm-hmm. for it. You know? It has to be something you attempted. Yeah. But I, I also think they need to do something about the I like to call it, someone's going to hate, I, I know Christian's going to hate me for this, the Clint Hay <laughs> style of uh, judo where you just drop, sit, drop Sayoui. Mm-hmm. So she uh, drops, drops, drops your knees over and over and over again, right? So you either yeah. get the throw, uh, throw um, like a half-ass rolling Yuko Wazari throw, like, or you just like turtle up afterwards. Yeah. Right. And then you shido, you shido out the guy because you're on the floor already. They can't attack you're, you. You're attacking. <laughs> well, is that the whole thing? It's like I'm attacking, aren't I? I'm attacking. Look, I'm pulling. Yeah. I'm bringing him down. And, I'm attacking. I'm attacking. I'm attacking. And they don't, they don't count Nawaza aggression as attacking. So mm-hmm. if you, if someone drop tries to drop Sayoi me and then they fail and then I attack them uh, the Nawaza and then I stand up and then they do it again, but I wasn't able to attack, then they'll give me a shido for passivity even though I was attacking on the ground. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, 
maybe we should start adding like Wazadis or Yukos to Newaza attempts. Like if you attempt a submission, like a legit submission and they escape, you get a wazadi. That will phone. never happen because they you don't think they so. Want, that will never happen, dude. Okay, they want how we made throw. it so you get a yuko for it then? No, no, not a wazadi. You get a yuko, so it's an advantage. All right, you don't get a half point, but you get an advantage for um, it. You get a yuko. I think the, the real solution to that is to just allow more nawaza time. Mm -hmm. You just maybe stop the clock. Like once you get to ground, maybe you stop the clock and then you start like, okay, you have one minute or two minutes on the ground. Just a second, something. stop one clock, start another yeah. clock. <laughs> yeah, or un unless you disengage. Like, if, if I disengage from you, then mm -hmm. then you just, like, re stand back up. But otherwise, if I'm moving for, like, a minute, then I should have time to work. But maybe not a minute. A minute is kind of long. Maybe 30 seconds. Yeah. I think something like that to encourage more Nawaza would be good. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I know a lot of people complain about turtling um, in judo and how they think getting taking someone's back with double hooks in should be considered osaikomi. But I think that's going to open a whole can of other worms. I don't, think so. I, I don't, I don't agree with that. It sounds no. good. On, it sounds good on paper, but when uh, you think about it, people are going to start exploiting that. And then now you're going to add more stupid rules to try and cover <laughs> the loopholes to those rules. And it's just like a whole can of other worms. Yeah. And yeah, as long as pinning people is a win, a winning path, you're going to have these kind of problems that we're looking at right now. So mm -hmm. best you can do is just minimize it and deal with what you have and focus it's on just the about, I think it's because it's just a generational thing also, because you get some of these older reps and they're not super old, but you get some older reps that did judo in the eighties or early nineties stuff. You get some of these really old, like local tournaments, you get some really old reps that don't know Nawaza. They're not good at Nawaza. So you don't understand Nawaza. And I think the younger generation is understanding Nawaza better and adapting to Nawaza mm -hmm. because of BJJ, you know, it's like these lost techniques of judo that we don't do that much because old senseis didn't think they're needed because most people teach judo for the sport. They teach judo to go win at tournaments. I try to teach judo for judo as a whole. I explain rules, but I also explain like this isn't. Uh, you can't do that tournament no more, but you can still do it to practice with, you know, like me teaching you how to do a uh, double leg, I'm Roto Gotti, or I was teaching some other guys the other week, how to do Kochi Gotti, grabbing a leg into Ochi Gotti, like one of my favorite leg grabbing techniques right there. So you ever do no gi, you ever do leg grabbing with me, I'm going over that Kochi Gotti to grab your leg and I'm going to sweep out the other one, just let you know, all right? <laughs> yeah, before I move on to something else, yeah, there's something else to talk about this, what we just talked about. No, no, I think we covered yeah. all the Olympic stuff. Just yeah, what, go out there's, there and one, watch it. there's one other thing I really don't like. What I saw is mm -hmm. they, st you know, they started counting how if you get on the ground, you can still throw. If your opponent gets on the ground, you can still throw them for any pawn. Yeah. So the rule supposedly is it's not really Nawaza yet until all four of your limbs, like your elbows and both knees, are on the ground mm -hmm. or both hands. Once all four limbs are on the ground, then it's Nawaza and the guy can't pick you back up and throw you again. Mm -hmm. So that's supposedly the case. So if you only had one knee down or two knees down in one hand, technically, if you stand back up or the guy picks you back up and throws you on the ground, yeah. like just rolls you over, that's a score. Yeah. Which is, I don't agree with that, but which is fine. If that's the rules, that's fine. But they were enforcing that rule really inconsistently. You see some of these throws that were meant to be scores that, and they're not being called. Some of them not meant to be scored and they're not, uh, being, and they're scored. Like, yeah. That's that has to do more with the refs. That has to be a refing thing. That has to be either a floor ref or a video. Because, but they they it, go through a video replay, and it's like if you know the freaking rules and you have it on slow yeah. motion, it's like why did you call that bad call? <laughs> like again, it's old school refs. I think I think it has to do with some of these old school refs that don't. That I I probably think it's a secret thing that they don't like these new rules and like, well, I'm not going to force this new rule. I don't that's like what, it. That's so. why I don't like. It's like judo has a whole mentality of you don't question the ref or the judges mm -hmm. no matter what you just accept what it is if you got fucked yeah. over then you got too bad like this bad yeah luck, right you should have threw them anyways yeah and they don't owe you an explanation like the athletes they don't go up to the ref and be like hey what what happened there they're not going to tell you <laughs> like mm -hmm. you, that's why you see some of them looking at the camera like trying to figure out what the hell happened like, like, what happened what, what did, what did what's yeah. going on here <laughs> Yeah, so at local tournaments they'll be nicer and say, "Oh, you did, you did this, all right." But mm -hmm. there, they don't care, and which is why I think having like a um, what do you call it? What I just told you about Taekwondo, how we were watching Taekwondo. And yeah, yeah, how they have like, the yeah. yeah. The, you can, there's a card you can use. You give to the ref, it will review, which they mm -hmm. 
And I think they owe you an explanation. It was like, oh, you look at this, 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 and this. Then yeah. at least they're kind of like now. Respond. That would be they're, interesting. Yeah, if they, they have, have to owe you an explanation. They owe you an explanation and have to justify. Otherwise, it just makes the sport and the refs look stupid, which I think is kind of hard to make them look even more stupid already. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot, of, a lot of hate for that. But um, <laughs> you can hit Anthony up at. <laughs> <laughs> so that we should have like a kind of um, system like that where you can kind of force a review and then if you were right and it gets overturned you get that card back otherwise you mm -hmm. wasted it right i love that i love yeah. that idea we should have that but it's kind of send that to the igf yeah they're not gonna they're not gonna have to have that right now but just send that to not, neil adams not questioning the rules and it's just kind of ambiguous which is why i think that's actually contributes to the fact why a lot of people even coaches don't know the rules because it's so ambiguous that they go to the tournament and they're like, I thought this was rules. And one of the refs like, oh no, it's actually this, but it's actually on paper, the ref is wrong too. Yeah, but if, yeah. You, if, you, if you force them to explain it, you can be like, hey, last time you, you said this happened and this was this mm -hmm. thing. So why is it this time is a different thing? And instead of now, it's just like, oh, you just don't understand the rules. Just trust us, yeah. we're the refs, just. There's a, I had a situation like that because like I read the rules, I have to know the rules because I teach and I coach and mm -hmm. all stuff. And I was competing at uh, Winter Nationals. It had to be like almost two years ago now. I had a guy down or I, I attempted to throw in a guy. He went down, flattened out. And I was going to go for a clock choke on him. Had the clock choke, had the, had the uh, arm across the throat and stuff. And for leverage, I went and grabbed his pant leg. In Nawaza, as I know the rules, in Nawaza, I'm allowed to grab the pant leg. I can grab the pant leg if we're in Nawaza already. If he's on his knees or standing, I can't grab the pant leg because we're not a full name wasn't, but he was flattened out on his belly. I was going for a clock choke. I grab his neck, I grab his pant, I start walking. The ref immediately says, and this is a younger ref, I'm not gonna say who it was or nothing, but if the younger ref says, uh, immediately says, Mate, and I get a Shido for grabbing his leg. And I'm like, what, what do you mean I get a Shido for? Like, I, I had the clock choke in there. Like, I had the, I had it right there. And this is actually why I took, um, second that year instead of first i lost that match after all and i even looked at the refs and the refs the side refs just like mm -hmm, da, 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 da. i was just like i was looking at the guys like i i can do this in newaza i can grab the leg in newaza to get the leverage for the clock choke and i even asked uh, another ref later another kind of famous ref in the la area uh gary takamoto about it and he was like oh no you can grab the pant leg and i was like so then why did no one stop this guy from stopping me getting this pin on this guy, choking this guy out? It's just, it's that inconsistency of like people not knowing the exact rules. And I get the rule. I know the rule. If he's on his knees, I can't grab the leg. Okay. If he's standing on one leg, I can't grab the leg. But the guy was bellied out already. He was flat on the mat. I'm going for a clock choke. I should be able to grab the leg at that. Maybe point. you should have asked for a rematch. I should ask. For, I should ask for a rematch. I should have thrown a car. I should have got naked. That's why I should. I should have got naked on the mat and stuff, and did a hissy fit, and maybe I got my rematch or something. And it was the same thing because this guy also. This pissed me off. This like going on a little rant right here about that match. I was gonna Ura not get the shit out of this guy. When the guy, like, I was in the air. I remember if you were there or not. I had this guy in the air, Udenage. He leans over like a motherfucker. Leaned over like a motherfucker, dude, to grab my leg to stop the pull. And they're like, uh, okay. And I was like, and they have Mate, Shido for him. Grabbing, like, he was in the air. He was done. No, that, <laughs> so, that's a valid. You can eat a Shido no, no, to I, prevent a throw. I know yeah. that. I know he I know he can. But it's like, <laughs> you stop me from choking this guy out because I grabbed the pant leg when it's supposed to be legal to grab the pant leg. And then yeah. he grabs my pant leg blatantly illegal <laughs> to stop him from being thrown. Yeah. I think I think that was actually uh, the logic behind why back then it was two sheet two leg grabs and it was a disqualification versus like yeah. three because of stuff like that. But obviously, yeah. it opened. It was like screwing things up. So you can't you can't just like make rules to cover other rules up. You have to find a source of the problem and pick mm -hmm. the one that's going to cause the least issues. But um, I mean, but like I, I'm, like I don't know before. I don't know. Like I mean, we said before, it's the end of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. They're going to have new rules come out. They do this yeah. every four years to us. Every four years, judo changes because of the Olympics. No point in having rules if you don't enforce it consistently. Just saying. Mm -hmm. like, no, but that's true. True. I don't know if I should say it, but like, I, I won't reveal too much information because I don't want to uh, make it obvious who it was. But one of the refs I've spoken to um, told me that at a really big tournament that they refed, 
like there was a blatant leg grab, but because the athlete was favored, the people on his headset told him to like let it slide. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) (laughs) let me turn these monitors off real quick. Let it go. (laughs) That's why they don't have the system that we're talking about where you can have to explain yourself and all that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's why a lot of judokas don't like watching judo, I guess. Like (laughs) (laughs) we just like doing it, like beating each other up. (laughs) Like I was just watching the U S open for, um, because our dojo had some members compete there and there's not a lot of there were some really beautiful throws but there's a lot of muscling and like injuries happening i'm just like Mm -hmm. i don't want to do that (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm questioning whether i want to still compete like risk and also you don't most people there unless you are in a certain weight category most people only get one or two fights like even mikhail like the guy on a dojo he fought the same guy twice, like traveled all the way to Florida, mm-hmm. three day tournament to fight the same guy. Best of three. Yeah. Is it worth it? Like, I don't know. That's why I stay like, luckily we live in California. So a lot of big tournaments happen here in California. So that's why yeah. I stay in California. And if the U S open or a USA judo nationals is in the West coast somewhere, it's not too far. I'll go to it. But when people yeah. say, Oh yeah, they're happening in Michigan or Florida or somewhere East coast or Midwest. I'm like, I'm okay. But if it's Los Angeles, uh, Vegas, Reno, Tahoe, you know, uh, all the way up to Oregon and stuff, I might go, but if it's, if it's local, I'll, I'll travel no problem. But yeah, that's a yeah. good point right there. I see like one, uh, one of the comments someone posted on Reddit was like, why is Ron Dory so much more interesting to watch at my local dojo than the world, than the Olympics? And I'm like, <laughs> cause well, no one wants to lose. That's what no I want to lose. And everyone's like playing a super safe and there's high stakes. Right. And everyone's uh, there's very little skill gap between the people versus in, in the dojo, you're just having fun and throwing, like having those big throws are fun and people are taking falls. So, um, yeah, I'm just thinking, do I want to compete and risk injury just cause someone decided to do like some really bad technique and muscle <laughs> me to the ground. Like, uh-huh. so that's something I have to ask myself. I'll probably still compete. I miss it, but yeah. I, I'm dumb. I love competing. I'll probably compete till I'm an old man, broken down, can't do it no more. That's all I know. It's compete, you can compete at the Kodakon with all the other 60, 70, 80 year olds. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Get me ready for that. <laughs> Get over here. Let me try something on you. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Anthony? No, I think uh, we could went, went over a lot and like I said, probably won't get i mean people listen to this because it's competition talk again <laughs> no no we're in disguise as saying that we're talking about how to watch judo in the olympics <laughs> we're in disguise it like that we should do like, that if, if you got this far <laughs> you fell for our trap <laughs> 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 all right so please everybody like share and subscribe you can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on tw- not Twitter. Actually, we don't have a Twitter yet. <laughs> follow us on Instagram. <laughs> you can follow us on YouTube at Tatami Talk. You can follow me on Instagram at the Jerry underscore Wand. You can follow Anthony at Anthony Throws on Instagram. Uh, we also put up some new videos on our YouTube channel about the illegal throws in judo uh, and some leg grabbing throws. I'm going to put up some gi throw, some gi throws, gi throws. <laughs> some gi videos. <laughs> I'm going to do some gi yeah. throws to Anthony sooner or later. They're going to come out. <laughs> But we're going to put some videos right now about uh, the difference between a judo gi, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu gi, the difference between a judo gi and a karate gi and a taekwondo gi, and just the difference between a judo gi, period. What's a double weave, what's a single weave, and what's the difference and why you use them? Yeah. Anything else you want to add, Anthony? Yeah, uh, I, I actually wanted to put more information in those videos, but there, uh-huh. I, I just have like so much to talk about in gi, so I yeah. guess we didn't really cover it's, all. It's going to be a continuous thing, most yeah. likely. We're going to put out these ones and we might get more detailed and do, because I know, this is a funny thing, and I'm getting off topic because so I'm supposed to finish it. I know I have a judo measuring ruler at the dojo somewhere. I just can't find it. Yeah. But when I do, that when I do, I'm going to make another video about judo gi and regulations. Yeah. If, so if you see those videos and you have questions about the geese I showed, we showed, or any more questions, just ask us because we try to keep those short and not go make them super long. So we can make another video if you have questions like, hey, like, what, how, what's the difference between this gi and this gi? Like, just let us know. We'll do another video. So, all right. All right. So thank you, everybody. Please stay tuned for the next time. All right. Yep. Anthony. Thank you. See you guys later. All right.